Uh, well, welcome to the Sherwood Oaks podcast. My name is Sean, and each week this summer, uh, we're going to be bringing you interviews with people from within the Sherwood Oaks family, uh, just to talk about what it means to put our faith into action. Uh, as a church, we value telling life-changing faith stories uh, because we believe that they uh, not only inspire us, but they also encourage us to put our own faith into action uh, and think like everyday missionaries and be uh, Christ-led influencers and all of that. So this is our ninth episode. And this week, I am so excited to be joined by Amy Lanham. Amy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Happy to be here. So why don't you start just by uh, sharing a little bit about yourself and your family? Okay. Um, so I uh, am married to my husband, Jason. Uh, we've been married for 22 years. Um, we were the uh, first wedding in the the, the auditorium um, oh, downstairs when oh, it yeah. was first built. So, so yeah, you guys christened yeah, that was, the uh -huh. new. Okay. We did, we All did. Right. We had a huge wedding with 500 people, and Whoa. yeah, yeah, it was wow. great. Um, so we now have we have two boys. Um, okay. My oldest, Josh, just graduated from high school, and he's wow. going to be going to IU, okay. studying kinesiology. He's okay. so excited. Um, he's working at Lowe's right now, right. and uh, then um, Austin will be a sophomore at Edgewood and is in marching band. And I'll be going to camp with him next week. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah we were just uh, we were just talking on the way in with some people. I mean, it sounds like mark, uh, band camp is as intense as football camp, if not even yes. more. Yes. So I mean, yes. long days. Yes. It is grueling. Yes, there yeah. are tears and people passing out and injured ankles. <laughs> and, and, and that's all just of the that. adults. I mean, <laughs> let alone the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe a little of that too. Yeah. Well, hey, um, tell us a little bit about your faith journey and maybe who some people along the way that were um, influential in, in your life. Oh, that's a, that's a big question. I, yeah. <laughs> I have been very blessed to have many amazing mentors through mm -hmm. my life just at, at every stage. So uh, I um, grew up here at Sherwood Oaks. Mm. Um, and uh, Tom came, Tom Ellsworth, the former minister, came when I was seven. Okay. Um, I was one of two kids in the youth group at the time. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, the church was less than 100 at that point. So um, then uh, I um, went to Hilltop a few times, Hilltop Christian Camp, yeah. and that was where I decided to you know, officially accept Jesus into my heart mm. and then was... Um, uh, came home after camp and was baptized at the, the church. Okay. And um, so uh, through the years, um, well, one of the, the first big influences was John Robertson because he was my youth minister. Oh, yeah. um, so he came when I was in the sixth grade, and uh, he and Marie um, just – uh, just poured into my life. I mean, uh, I just think about what our youth group was like at the time and how involved I was. And there was something on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. And when I was in high school, there were D groups in the morning before school. And I was involved in all of that. Um, I was also part of Bible Bowl at the time. Yes. Yes. That is becoming kind of a constant theme here. Like we've, we've heard several people that were involved in Bible Bowl. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I did that for several years. So uh, Jim and Jenny Bowen were Aww. the sponsors at the time. Yeah. And so they are definitely some people that, that really poured into me. Um, I could go on and on about as, you know, as a teenager, different people that worked with the youth group that, that were really influential. Um, um, and then uh, when um, when I graduated from high school, went to Johnson Bible College okay. um, for a year and a half, and then I finished at IU. Okay. Um, but at Johnson, I had um, a professor, Dr. Reese, uh, that was someone that um, really uh, poured into me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, was a weekend pastor for a very small church that was about 45 minutes away from the campus. Okay. And so there was a group of us that would go with him mm -hmm. and help with children's church or whatever it was that he needed. Yes. And uh, that was a, a great time. And the families would have us over uh, for a meal. And, you know, as a college student, when you're away from home. A home-cooked meal. A home-cooked I mean, meal is a gold. good thing, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that was good. And uh, see, when I um, came back and finished at IU, Dean Mathis was um, the college minister okay. here. So uh -huh. he and his wife, Amy, um, spent so many hours with them um, as well. And uh, then I would say... 
the young single person, um, Doug and Susan Schmidt, yeah. um, wow. worked with our program and spent a lot of time with them. And then um, as a mom, Claudia Mitchell, I mean. Um, so uh, you, you're able to look around and you've got like your own hall of faith that poured into you. There's some I do. like spiritual powerhouses. Powerhouses. That, that you've mentioned there. It, exactly. I, yeah. I, I am just abundantly, abundantly mm. blessed in and, that area. And every single one of the people that you mentioned would probably say, I was just putting my own faith into action, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. they wouldn't say right. that they would not refer to themselves as spiritual powerhouses. Right. They were just saying, I was just living out my faith. Yeah. And that's kind of. I think what happens, we mm -hmm. find that we can be influencers over yes. other people. And right. clearly it's made a huge impact in, in right. your life. And right. I'm sure the life of, of yeah. others that yeah. were in that circle too. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool. So uh, just a, a little bit of a peek behind the curtain uh, for those that are listening or watching right now. Uh, today is actually July 12th. Um, it is 9.18 a.m., uh, but this podcast is going to be dropping on August 3rd, which I believe is the second day of school. And you are a school librarian yes. uh, at Owen Valley? Owen Valley right? High yeah. School, yes. Um, so what, what led you to that role? That, that is a great question. If you had asked me when I graduated from library school in 2001, if I would want to be a high school librarian, I would have laughed and said, yeah. no. <laughs> what? Go work with teenagers? No, they're, they're scary. Yes. <laughs> uh, because I had been a fourth grade teacher okay. um, before that. So I was used to working with, with younger, yeah. younger kids. They're and, still and, nice then. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're still a bit more manageable and they don't smell so bad and, you know, all of that. <laughs> um, but basically what happened was... Uh, Jason uh, decided that he needed to make a, a career change, okay. and uh, he had been at Cook Medical, and uh, he had an opportunity to um, make a switch over to Edward Jones as a financial advisor, yeah. okay. and we felt like that would be a wonderful position for him because mm -hmm. it combined both his business skills with his m previous ministry skills. Mm -hmm. Because when you're working with people and their mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. there are all kinds of sad and terrible circumstances that can, people can go yeah. through. Yeah. And so he saw as an opportunity you know, to, to really help people in, in a time of need. Um, in order to make that transition though, he was going to have to take a massive pay cut. Mm -hmm. Um, I had already thought about going back to work full time. Um, I had been home with my boys during the pandemic, um, kind of helping them with their schoolwork online and everything, and yeah. had been looking for some some different things um, to do. And I don't even remember. I I just started searching different opportunities, different school systems around, and this came up. And why I even thought it was a possibility, but but library jobs and schools are few and far between. Uh, it's hard, yeah. It, it's hard yeah. to find them, and yeah. they usually end up hiring from within. Mm. And the fact that I'd been out of education for so long, I thought, you know, I'm never going to get hired in this position. I'm never going to be able to use this degree. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, there's one available for high school. Let's just go for the interview, see what happens. Yeah. And it was one of those I showed up. The office staff was so nice. I walked in and it just, it felt like home. Mm. I went into the interview. The interview didn't feel stressful. It felt easy. Um, great conversations with the people around the table. Um, normally, you know, in those situations, I'm super, super nervous. I just, yeah. I didn't feel nervous. Mm. I walked away thinking, that, that felt really good. And <laughs> he said he'd let me know by the end of the week and yeah, next day, Next day, phone call. He said, we all agreed unanimously. Wow. He's like, we wow. want you to come work for us. Oh, that's great. And uh, so I've just been just constantly over the last two years so grateful that he was willing mm. to, to take a risk on yeah. me, someone who hadn't done the job before, hadn't worked with teenagers in an official role before yeah. I had, you know, done it for youth group and, you know, Sunday school, things like that. And, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm reading this book right now called Soundtracks um, by John Acuff, and he talks about overthinking mm -hmm. and how that is such a powerful influence in our life mm -hmm. and even a detriment to us mm -hmm. taking steps of faith. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment where you took that kind of step of faith and you're yes. like, I'm just going to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then it went well. Mm -hmm. 
in my mind, I I sabotage myself mm-hmm. <laughs> because I mm-hmm. overthink that, right. and I think, oh, it went well, but now they're not gonna they're not gonna want to pursue me, or maybe it didn't go as well as I thought that I did, and I'm just kind of fooling myself. Um, did you have any moment in that where you're like? I'm taking this step of faith. It seemed like it went well, but oh, I'm still not sure what's going to happen here. I would say, you know, I, I feel very blessed that um, I have always felt clear direction from God mm. on next steps. Yeah, yeah. And mine kind of comes with this... Um, a piece, and yeah. it's really, I would say, a piece that surpasses understanding. Because mm. um, I, I, I will tell you, I've had some interviews where I walked away, and I'm like, that did not go well. That is not a good fit. I mean, mm-hmm. there was one principal that I went to an interview, and I called him, and I said, "Yeah, this, this, I'll just make the don't. Decision for yeah, you. I'm going to make the decision <laughs> for you. I'm just going yeah, to withdraw yeah. my name. This isn't going to work." Yeah. Um, so yeah, there have definitely been those times, but uh, this this was definitely one of those where there was a piece about it, yeah. and not a worry as if you know, okay, if they decide that I'm not the right fit, I'm going to be devastated. I yeah. didn't feel that way at all. I just thought if this is a place that I'm meant to be. Mm-hmm. this will work out. And mm-hmm. I think because I've had enough circumstances in my life where that's really been the case, Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah. that, you know, it, it did work out for whatever reason. I just could breathe and say, you know, if this isn't it, there will be something It's going to be else. okay. Yeah. And I've just been led in lots of places that I did not expect to be. But when mm-hmm. you take those steps mm-hmm. to follow where you really think God wants you, even though you don't necessarily feel equipped because sometimes you don't Mm -hmm. but I think God fills in those gaps yeah yeah absolutely I love that I love that so just being able to look back on some experiences of how God has worked in the past and and being able to walk in with that confidence not in yourself Mm -hmm. but in the Lord Mm -hmm. that come what may um, God's gonna provide he's gonna take care of us yeah I love that that's good so I know that a lot of teachers and administrators um, wrestle with how to live out their faith um, in the classroom or in the office or in the library. Mm-hmm. And, and so how do you manage that tension between showing your faith in Jesus, which is so important to you, it's right. a foundation of who you are, right. um, but also not crossing boundaries that might, you know, get you in trouble? Or, mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how, do you, mm-hmm. how do you kind of manage that tension? Mm-hmm. Well, I love the library versus the classroom because mm-hmm. it is very unique. And libraries are also known for being safe spaces. Mm. Um, And so public libraries, school libraries, it's a place that's, it's for everyone regardless. Mm. And so I approach it as this space is a space for me of unconditional love for all Mm. of these people who walk in. I mean, you know, Jesus calls us to love unconditionally. Yeah. Um, but I think too often as people of faith, we we do put conditions on other people. Mm. Sometimes even not realizing. Not realizing yeah. it. Not yeah. realizing it. We sometimes judge other people's actions based on what we believe yeah. um, and not recognizing where they are and yeah. what they believe. Yeah. Um, so I want every student that walks in that, that room just to know that I love them. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. care the color of this, their skin, the color of their hair, because yeah. there are lots of colors these <laughs> days, you know. I, um, I don't I don't care, you know, what gender they identify with. Mm-hmm. I don't care, you know, do they like boys? Do they like girls? I don't mm-hmm. care. They come in there. I'm going to love that child for mm-hmm. who they are, mm-hmm. and I'm going to encourage them. And one, one of the greatest compliments I had was a student who came in and she would come in occasionally and talk with me. And she came in one day, shared something with me. And she said, I just love that you listen to me without judgment. Mm. And I think that for me, sharing my faith is not so much necessarily what comes out of my mouth, but just listening and listening wow. with love. Oh, that's so good. That's so good because I think people long to be heard. They do. They long to be heard. They do. When I started two years ago, um, I I had no idea 
how much kids were going to talk to me and how much they were going to share with me. Um, they will share things with me that they won't, that they probably should share with a guidance counselor, but they don't want to because they don't necessarily want anything done about that it. feels they a little bit want, more official. And, yes, yeah. yes. They just yeah. want somebody to hear. Um, and so I had... Um, I have a, had a chair that, that sat beside my desk, and and I had posted on Facebook about this chair that, you know, I would have students come mm. in and sit in that chair and talk mm-hmm. with me. Well, that chair in the last two years has grown to about five or six chairs, wow. and they will fight over the chairs. They will come, and they will have lunch with me, and, you know, they – and here I am, this gray-haired 50-year-old lady, <laughs> um, and they're, they're fighting to sit next to me at lunch, mm. um, which – is, is just a huge a huge testament mm-hmm. to the power of listening mm-hmm. because I really don't I don't say a whole lot and yeah. I do try to ask questions you know and I do very much try to encourage them I I try to learn what their gifts are so mm-hmm. that I can speak those out to them because a lot of the kids that I work with are students who um, really struggle in mm-hmm. school because I have credit recovery students that are assigned to me for okay. the library okay. um, so the, a lot of them have difficult home lives yeah. and um, just hard circumstances I've, I've heard before that like that line between being heard and feeling loved is mm-hmm. almost in perceptible yeah. I mean, it's it is mm-hmm. they the two are so closely related mm-hmm. and so I imagine that you being that safe person that that loves them kind of where they are has given you some opportunities for the Lord to work through you to, mm-hmm. to minister to yes. them can yeah. are there anything anything like that without breaking any confidence that, yeah. that you could share yeah. with us um, so yeah <laughs> Oh, there are so many stories. I, I, I'll confess that I, I probably cry about once a week, at least on mm. the way home, because of some of the stories that have been mm. shared with me. Um, and they are, they are heavy, heavy, heavy yeah. stories. Um, I've had many share about, you know, parents of, with drug abuse. Mm. Um, had two students that at 17 were living on their own. Um, one, one, her mother was in jail, father wasn't in the picture, um, the other situation, father was abusive, you know, it just, Mm. um, and mother wasn't in the picture, mother had, uh, I think passed away, actually. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just a lot of opportunities that way to just try to, um, to encourage them, you know, a student who got pregnant and Mm. so trying to meet some physical needs that way I try Mm -hmm. very hard to look for physical needs Mm -hmm. um, to meet Uh, also um, just well so in a school where there's not a a huge amount of money I mean it's it's Mm. a nice it's lovely school nice school well taken care of but there's not a lot a lot of money for extracurriculars and things like that Mm. and so when they're selling something you know I'm I'm You're sure buying. to buy it, yeah. you know, like yeah. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Um, so. You hear that high school students? If you go to own Valley, <laughs> now you know who to hit up. <laughs> That's right. I think they're probably learning pretty quickly. Yeah. The word is, the word is spreading, but yeah. So, you know, just kind of meeting their, them where they yeah. are um, mm-hmm. in those circumstances and, um, that's great. So you have children of, of your own. Uh, yes. And, you know, as my as my girls get older, one of the things that I'm trying to help them navigate is is how to be an influence over others instead of always being influenced by others, mm-hmm. uh, especially those that maybe not don't share the same faith that we have or values. Um, how have you walked through that with with your own boys? Yes, uh, that that's a very good question. So um, I have always taught them to, you know, look, look to others Mm -hmm. that seem lonely, Mm. you know, um, or hurting or, um, and look to the bullies because usually the bullies, there is something lying underneath. Hurt people hurt people. Right. And that's so true. Yes. So yeah, there's usually an underlying hurt that's happening. Yes. So both of my boys had, you know, some different situations with with kids that were difficult to get along Mm -hmm. with that they would come home and talk about that. And we would 
we would talk through that, you yeah. know, and and um, let's let's understand that this they're behaving because they're hurting for mm. some reason, yeah. and you know if if we could identify that, we would try to identify that. And um, my my older son Josh would be involved in like best friends club at school, okay. which okay. they would kind of partner them with um, sometimes kids who like basically have special needs mm-hmm. that might be having trouble making friends for whatever reason mm-hmm. and. So he did that. He did unified track um, oh, I love with that. special needs kids yeah. and absolutely loved that. Cool. Um, and then uh, with Austin, we've uh, recently noticed that um, there are plenty of opportunities with band uh, to be able to reach out to kids and mm. love on them. And so Jason has been volunteering his time, mm. giving some free lessons to kids. Uh, that need a little extra help he has been um just uh, inviting lots of kids over to to join us for different things and uh, i think we spoke on the phone i mentioned that uh, on father's day austin was aware of a a couple of of girls who who didn't have uh, dads in the picture Mm. for different reasons and Mm -hmm. invited them to to come over and join us for father's day so just trying to look for those just people who are right in front of us who have a need that we can easily meet, and mm-hmm. these people are not projects; yeah. they are friends. Yeah, they are friends, and we just want to show them love. It's any just way people we can. to love, and and yeah, to show yeah. the love of Jesus too. Yeah. And you know, I mentioned it before, but the greatest spiritual influencers in my life were my best friend's parents. Mm-hmm. Uh, they poured into me. They loved me where I was, even though that was not a good place, mm-hmm. and I was kind of bringing their son down to where I was. They continued to be consistent mm-hmm. in my life, uh, pointing me to Jesus. And eventually, uh, the light bulb went off, yeah. and and it all connected. Right. And so, yeah, I think that's one of the best ways that we can be a Christ-led influencer in the lives of others. It's yes. just be in their life. Yes. And be with them. Yes. Don't discount the little things because mm-hmm. those little things add up over time, yeah. and they do point people to Jesus because they see a difference in you. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, as school starts. Uh, what are some ways that we can pray for you specifically, um, but then also all of the other teachers and, and administrators in our schools who are followers of Jesus? Hmm. I would say um, to pray for um, endurance and perseverance mm. um, for us, um, to pray for um opportunities for us to interact well and yeah. be able to demonstrate our faith to people. I would say to um, pray that we have the, the energy to, to vote not only to what we're doing at school, but then to have the energy to d- devote to our families mm. at home oh, because that can yeah. be difficult as well. And um, just uh, and if you know if you know one of us, just just a word of encouragement to say, mm-hmm. you know, hey, keep doing what you're doing. What you mm-hmm. do is important and, and it matters because there are lots of hours put in behind the scenes exactly. that that people don't don't even realize. Yeah. And um, sometimes, you know, some of us are in situations where we deal with some really really heavy stuff, yeah. and just need to have that encouragement. Um, to be able to to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Yeah. When you work with people, you -hmm. you never are able to fully turn it off. It can be hard Mm -hmm. because, you know, you may leave the office, you may Mm -hmm. leave the library, Mm -hmm. you may leave your job, but the people, if you really care about them, continue to kind of swirl around in your heart Mm -hmm. and in your mind. And so, yeah, that's good. Uh, So we'll be praying about those things. And, And Amy, for you, keep it up. Keep it up. Don't get discouraged. What you are doing matters, and it's making a difference in the kingdom. I'm grateful for you. Thank you. So thank you for joining us uh, today, uh, and thank you, listener, for tuning in. If you found this episode helpful, uh, be sure to share it with a friend or maybe a teacher that you know in your life, and then hit that follow button so that you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. Uh, I hope that what Amy shared with you today will encourage you to go out and live your own faith story uh, that not only changes your life, but will also help you be a Christ-led influencer in the lives of others.